All right, we're back. We're going to be on page eight of notes two of Calc C. We're talking about Taylor polynomials. So Taylor polynomial we have found. Eventually, we're going to talk about Taylor series, which is why I'm stumbling over the word polynomial. Uh, Taylor polynomials, we find out, are like extensions sort of of tangent lines. A tangent line is the first degree Taylor polynomial. It matches the value of the function, the first derivative. A Taylor polynomial is going to go farther um, and it'll match the value of the second derivative, the value of the third derivative, up to whatever degree polynomial you're dealing with. It'll match the derivative of your chosen function or your given function or the function you're approximating at the center. And so the center is like the point of tangency for a tangent line, but it's not a point of tangency anymore. Um, it's, it's now just called the center. Um, and so one of the things I want to really highlight here, literally, is uh, since our goal is going to be to do things in the most efficient way possible, you actually end up memorizing kind of a fair amount of stuff when you're doing these. And the sooner you get it memorized, the better. And the reason that I'm probably putting this here right now is that the next thing is something that you definitely need to memorize. So here we go. How wrong are you? So we'll never know exactly how wrong we are because if you had an approximation and you know exactly how wrong it is, then all you would need to do is, is add those together and you would have the exact answer. Like you wouldn't actually have an approximation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna find a bound for it. Like the most we could possibly be wrong. We're probably less wrong, but we don't know. And this is the maximum we could be wrong. It's gonna look like this. So it's called the Lagrange error bound. And um, you're gonna hear it a lot, right? So it's the Lagrange error bound for nth degree Taylor polynomial. So this is for the nth degree Taylor polynomial. And what's important about that is you need to know what n is because n plays a role in the error bound. So the most you could possibly be wrong, maybe you're over, maybe you're under, we're gonna put absolute values around it. The absolute value of the error, the most you could be wrong, is less than or equal to, and this is kind of weird, m, so m is this weird thing. So it's m, don't worry about it now, times the absolute value of x minus a to the m plus one over m plus one factorial. So in my mind, and actually I think in actuality, this looks a lot, it looks like, uh, I'm gonna put it in quotes, the next term, right? Because if you're writing out a Taylor polynomial, the term, uh, the term you end on is the nth derivative x minus a to the n over n factorial. That's the last thing that you write. The next thing you write would have been uh, the nth derivative, the n plus first derivative, the, the next thing you write, right? So like the last, here we go. Let's, instead of saying it, let me just write it. So if you end your polynomial at uh, the nth derivative at a, I don't know why I'm writing on this weird slant, but I am, uh, to the n, and then over n factorial, right? So that's where you end your polynomial. The next term would have been, if we kept going, the next term would be the n plus first derivative at the center, x minus a to the n plus one, and then over n plus one factorial. Now compare that to the error. So this is what the next term, the first term left off would have looked like this. The error basically looks like that, right? It looks almost identical, except uh, there's an absolute value. Now the absolute value, what that's doing is it's guaranteeing that you get a positive out of this thing, right? Because we're doing the absolute value of the error is less than or equal to. So we have to put an absolute value there to make sure we get a positive because you might be taking it to an, an odd power and if it was a negative to an odd, it'd be negative. So we put absolute value, then M is gonna be because we don't actually know uh, what to use there. So that's really where the boundary is coming from. So this is very specific. So this M is, let me highlight it, M, it's the maximum of the absolute value of the N plus first derivative on the interval with N points X and A. So uh, this is easier to do than it is to say, but if, so let me, uh, let me try over somewhere. So if your center, uh, I don't know how I wrote center wrong there. I like jump to the word is, if your center is uh, three, 
and you approximate uh, the function at uh, x equals say 2.9, then your interval would be 2.9 to 3, inclusive. Um, so if, if you were approximating uh, 3.5, your interval would be from 3 to 3.5. So this, it's not as hard to use as it is to talk about it. Um, the key is finding m, and it turns out like uh, you often don't find m. You often uh, kind of like keep approximating as you go, but we're going to do a, a bunch of problems and you'll see what I'm talking about there. So let's see what, what else this has. So um, x is going to definitely be uh, the coordinate you're approximating the function, right? So uh, in, in my dark blue here, uh, x is 2.9. a is the center. n is the highest degree derivative used, right? So that what did we use to get the last term of our polynomial? Was it the fifth derivative? Then n is five. So then we have to look at the five plus one, the sixth derivative. And then m is the tricky part. It's the maximum of the absolute value of the n plus first derivative on the interval between x and a. So uh, it's not that bad to do. Let's take a look at this and see if, uh, if we can deal with it. The one thing here, is actually maybe before doing an example, I'll just cut this and like come back in another video and, and do the problem. I don't know. Uh, it's weird. Like finding M is a little weird because uh, sometimes you can't do it uh, exactly. And you just know like uh, if you could find the maximum of the M plus first derivative on this interval, it would definitely be less than three. What will happen, especially on the AP exam, you're going to basically be given M somehow. Either you're given a graph where you can read M off of it or you just see a weird statement like this. Like the sixth derivative is less than or equal, the absolute value of the sixth derivative is less than or equal to 14 for all x. Like why are you being told that? You're being told that because that's the value you're supposed to use for m. Why might they give you m? Well, if you had to grade 300,000 tests, wouldn't you want everyone to be used, everyone who knows what they're doing at least, to be using the same value of m? It's like a, a preventative measure that's just not gonna drive you insane, hopefully. Um, and then sometimes you need to use calculator. Sometimes you need to calculate it. Like a lot of things going on, right? So I'll stop this video here and I will come back in the next one and actually do this problem. Uh, and that video will probably be short, but who cares? Um, so I will see you in the next one.